So today, as I mentioned yesterday, I'm going to be doing a seven day cards of calmness as um, I'm going to call it a springboard, even though calmness we usually associate with being like coming in traverted, like uh, um, recessing, like recessing and calmness comes in, we're going in this practice of being calm as a springboard of going into the world as what calmness would be if it was sticking its head out of you. So I'm going to read them now. Each one has a quote on one side and then I wrote on the other side and I have seven of them. Now there's been a lot of holidays so this is not the past week plus for me a week where I would do this would be six days because on the Sabbath I don't do it. So that means that this is not from this past seven days. This is from various days in between holidays where it is like a Sabbath where I don't write or do introspective work. The type of work I do on a Sabbath is to rest in being, is a more receiving, not generating information to put on a paper. Mostly the information I get other days comes from the experience of the Sabbath. It even says that on the Sabbath we get our week's worth portion. You can also say it's our week's worth inspiration that on Tuesday something will be available only because of some seed planted that takes three days on the Sabbath. So the idea is that we're receiving the, the abundance. Now there's also a Kabbalistic idea that the Sabbath goes three days behind and three days before, like the menorah. Um, now the menorah we have is like eight days with one in the middle as the, uh, or one at the side, so it's like nine. We would say like a menorah kind of shaped with, like you have three and three and one in the middle. It's like the Sabbath is the light of the fire that goes out and time can be, go this way or that way because from the Sabbath perspective, it's beyond time. It is a more infinite level of no before and after. I don't want to use the word level. It's a more infinite realm of no before and after so that things can easily sh change in either direction where there isn't already the attachment that one way is refining or maturing and the other way is, you know, um, regressing or it's like not that there's a progression or a regression from a starting place that's before but rather there's a middle place that goes back and forth and um, that's the idea of the presence and then the presence fills in a history and fills in a potential all right so now I'm going to continue with that being said this practice is to cultivate more of that um, and the reason I chose seven is to connect with the Sabbath so or Shabbat, Shabbos. In Hebrew, we would say Shabbat. And the other dialect, which is a Hebrew where we use the letter Ta as a Sa, Sa, Ta. It has two sounds, Ta and Sa, the final letter. The final letter is expressed by Hebrew speakers as a Ta. And the final letter is expressed by usually English speakers or speakers of Yiddish as a S, like Shabbos instead of Shabbat, different pronunciation for the record. All right, first one says, today start your day with a smile, calmness of mind, coolness of emotions, and a heart filled with gratitude. And I wrote that day, letting my various activities flow into each other instead of, oh, it starts today, I'll find a few minutes of calm by letting my various activities flow into each other instead of doing things in a wrapped up way of a clear cut beginning and end paying attention to what causes my pain or discomfort to disappear, be it temporarily or long-term, and allowing a day of transition and errands be one where I get credit for my current, past, and future self to be invest, just to be that I'm investing in my own system, my own system, um, by seeing work or adapting as a chance to recompile myself as a process. So a system of semi-conducting and semi-reacting energies that constitute my uniquely balanced frequency. I almost feel I have to read that again. I'm learning so much. I'm going to read the second half again. After I wrote about things flowing into each other without beginnings and ends, clear cut, and then also like paying attention to what causes long-term or short-term alleviation of pain or discomfort. 
And then I wrote, allowing a day of transition and errands to be one where I get credit from my current past and future self to be investing in my own system of semiconducting and semi-reacting energies that constitute my unique balanced frequency. And this is by seeing work and adapting as a chance to recompile myself as a process. That is amazing. <laughs> and um, I wrote at the top, edges have a meniscus of electrically charged fluidity. This is like my today. That's my offering of today, actually. Edges have a meniscus of electrically charged fluidity. Sometimes we think something's the beginning because it's the middle point um, of a before and after. But actually, there was an after that could be bulging into the before, or the before could be bulging into the after. The next card, so the, now these are six previous offerings. I'll do it like that. You have two choices, to control your mind or to let your mind control you. Paul Coelho, I think that's how you say his name. Today I'll find a few minutes of calm by letting things be simply as they are, trusting I'll be able to navigate moment by moment as I need to, with the ability to check in, to do check-ins with both my body and emotions to see how the natural response to life will always show up, even if I don't know how to integrate it. Believing that I can make a difference with the small choices too, even if there's not a big effect or outward change. Even the things I think need to be a certain way can't contain the all, so letting some things go in their own pathways with, without my input. I almost feel like I took this. It says you have two choices to control your mind or let your mind control you. And I said, well, I can control my mind or try to control the world. My mind controlling me, I try to control the world, right? That's really amazing. Um, next, business day, because I don't know if this was a Yom Tov or a Shabbos. Um, from Lao Tzu, if you could, who, um, the Tao, if you study the Tao, you'll recognize the name. If you correct your mind, the rest of your life will fall into place. Today I'll find a few minutes of calm by, focusing on soothing and nourishing myself physically, accepting my life and forgiving everyone in it, including my family, even for a moment. Going to 770 or Kingston Avenue is a safe place if I need company or community. Repeat the psychic mantra, I want to receive what you want to give to life, higher power, creator, or others. Remember, it's a psychic mantra, it's in your mind, silent. Zoom out and see I'm here for a mission, even if there's parts that feel coercive. Because I don't remember why it can't be any other way for the bigger picture. Um, that comes from a teaching that before we're born, the soul, according to Judaism, we learn, is able to see its whole entire life and chooses it, jumps full into it, jumps into life, like thrown into life by a force of jumping into it. Like, I can do it, it'll happen. And it's good. And um, so sometimes I struggle with zooming out to see, like, I feel coerced and it's like I don't see why it wouldn't be any other way in the bigger picture. I feel like there's better ways, you know. Um, Nelson Mandela, may your choices reflect your hopes, not your fears. Today I'll find a few minutes of calm by not needing to be right or know or understand, putting myself or my, my pace, my needs, my abilities first, trusting people's innate goodness. Focusing on seeing out my own perspective, trusting I'll have the right words. Believing when one door closes, another always opens. Letting things be, the truth will stay standing. And I don't need to prove to anyone what's real, because what was, is, and will be will last on its own. Combining tasks so I don't get stuck in perfectionism. Just doing without, other, without overthinking to the point of non-action and procrastination. Happiness depends upon ourselves from Aristotle. Today I'll find a few minutes of calm by scheduling and rescheduling as much as my inner teen needs. Avoiding something that is too much. I needed to hear that. My inner teen needed to hear that I have a right to like change a schedule. I think I used to wear my hair like this as a teenager. And I like these kind of scrunchies. Like I've been doing it lately because it feels like just accessing that part of me. It's not like I look in the mirror all the time, but then I catch glimpses like right now or when I'm passing by. All right, I'm gonna start from the beginning um, after the teen. Avoiding something that's too much effort and risk for me now. Prioritizing assembling with community for truth and connection. Being okay with people not living up to their promises as I get more reliant on my own creativity and friendliness and sharp-mindedness and communicability that'll help me in all situations and pushing off readings 
to a time I can be more present and conscious with the meaning rather than the superficial experience of skimming quickly for the sake of being able to handle being appropriately distributive in also other areas of my life. I remember that. Like, I don't know what day it was, but I remember those lessons, you know? Um, and now just saying them out loud is a gift to me too. Um, Alexandra stuttered. Slow down. Calm down. Don't worry. Don't hurry. Trust the process. <sighs> She's right. Today, I'll find a few minutes of calm by believing in the body's ability to heal, living energy in me and everyone else, all beings, trusting being honest is enough, believing I'll figure out everything by being present, and I don't need to plan ahead too much from now because I'll be able to resource in the moment when it comes. By being able to see most of what I'm doing as tasks I have previously made for me now, for myself, so I can also reschedule these things or cancel them if life changes and I can't do it. A lot of theme here I see of giving myself permission. I can calm down better when I give myself permission to change and adapt and also adjust the tasks. Not going to let small mistakes or incapability limit define my holism. Um, the art of peaceful living comes down to living compassionately and wisely is from Alan Loco. Today I'll find a few minutes of calm by not taking on other people's pain only to feel crushed, lonely, and burdened after and experience it like a punishment. Recognize it's okay that I didn't intentionally cultivate some of the traits I have and some may even be inherited. And recognizing that if I perceive a power struggle, it's because I'm trying to be more powerful on the outside than I am on the inside. Wow, there's really a theme. See how beautiful it is to just reflect on these? Like a theme of, first of all, permission to myself, permission to relate differently to time and work and see the value more I see the value coming up here more of rest and a flowing and it's not worth it no little task is worth losing all of it um, and also this idea of controlling my mind versus controlling trying to control reality or other people and finally it says here letting life find ways to pick me up carry me and support me and I and even though I don't yet see it enough to believe in its presence I believe it's still possible for me and in parentheses, I wrote, because we all need somebody to lean on, lean on me, or count on me. And then there's a music sign. And sometimes I feel like I wish I had somebody who I could just like physically just like lean on. They could be my couch or my tree. Could be a woman, I guess. I mean, I always wanted it to be a man to be so stable that he could support me but I guess with my father I'm just sharing this before I go that I guess with my father he's such a reactive man in my opinion um, externally toward me at least um, just doesn't my parents don't really listen so to me so it's like A friend of mine would say, truth, let it out. So yeah, I guess my parents didn't really listen to me and I felt like I didn't matter because what I was trying to say didn't matter and they didn't want to get to know me, they weren't interested and they didn't have the same values even like of listening. Even if you don't agree, like agree to disagree, they didn't even have that basic value in my opinion and I felt like um, just wanting someone to be unreactive means at times probably have to tell myself that I could be provoking in order just to get the situation where I know that I could recreate a situation where the person's not reacting but now I'm learning how to decide what I could do myself like the, the old patterns of like lashing out for example in order or provoking as a way of control don't work for me Thank you for spending time with me. See you tomorrow for another similar topic video.